Okay, let's go with it. Praise the Lord. I was going to talk about the ascension tonight when Christ ascended into heaven, but when Martha went to be with the Lord, God just changed my message. And I want us to get into the book of Hebrews tonight. And it'll, the scriptures will be on the, the board. Starting with Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. I'm going to read some of them through, and some of them I'm going to talk about them. But you know, sometimes as we, as we walk down here, as I look back in my Christian life, I can testify to many times that God answered my prayers. When people were about to die, uh, we as a church, individually, we prayed, and people lived. People came through many crises. God delivered them. But then there were those that we prayed the same way, like we did for those that was delivered and healed and set free. And yet, they passed on to be with the Lord. So I want to bring a little balance in that tonight and uh, might help you uh, in your walk with God. Because sometimes, if we have somebody that we love so dearly, and we pray with all our heart, we fast, we do everything we know, and yet they pass from this life into eternity. Now, when a Christian passes from this life into eternity, it's rough on us. It's hard for those that to lose their loved ones. But for that individual to be with the Lord, I almost just marvel at the fact that they're seeing our Lord face to face. They are in the glory. And I've tasted some of the glory in my walk with God. And it's powerful. It's strong. It's wonderful to feel that the presence of God so strong that you know he's in your room, he is there. Uh, it, nothing can compare to, to that in this world. So let's begin to read and see some of the people that God delivered by faith. But we're also going to see in, in uh, chapter 11 some of those that did not get delivered. And we want to sort of balance it out tonight. And maybe, maybe we won't have the answer to why but we do know that God knows best, and God is God, and we're not God, and God makes no mistakes, so remember that. But I, I, I want to preach this and teach this tonight because I've dealt with people that got bitter. Bob, I prayed my heart out. I fasted. I did everything I know to do, and my, my wife died, or my husband died, or my child died. Why, why, why? And they got bitter. I don't know if you remember the message I preached quite a long time ago about either you're going to get bitter or better in every situation. Remember that. And you have to watch that out in, in, in life. You can get disappointed in such a way that you can get bitter. There's times you may want to say, I've had it. This is it. It doesn't pay to be a Christian. And that's just what the devil tries to do is to get us to go the way of the world of flesh and the devil. But So let's begin to read this. Chapter 11, verse 1, it's on the board. Here we go. Now, faith is the substance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Now, that's a mouthful right there. And uh, when faith is operating in your life, even though you do not have that particular thing that you're having faith for, yet you know that you're going to get it. Now remember, God counts those things that be not as though they were. Do we understand that? God counts those things that are not as though they were. Uh, it appears that we as Christians are not righteous, but God says we are righteous. It doesn't appear that we are righteous, but God counts those things that be not. It appears that we are not, and yet he says it is. You are righteous. I hope you understand that. Let's go on. For by faith, trust, and holy fervor, uh, verse 2, Born of faith, the men of old had divine testimonies born to them and attained a good report. 
Now, I want to stop here. And when you read the book of Hebrews, you will find that many of the Christians were being discouraged. They were being persecuted. A lot of the Judaizers were coming in and getting them all mixed up and trying to get them to come back into the, uh, into the Jewish faith and leave the Christian faith. So when you read the book of Hebrews, you need to understand that, that the Hebrew writer says that, that God is better. Uh, I'm sorry, Jesus is better than Moses. Jesus is better than the angels. Jesus is better than the old covenant. And uh, these people were wanting to go back into the old uh, uh, Jewish uh, ceremonies and uh, teachings. And so when you read the book of Hebrews, that's why the Hebrew writer begins to talk about uh, all the different uh, Jewish faith and what they did and what those rituals, rituals and, and those laws meant. And he says they're nothing but a shadow. The real substance is Christ. We have the real substance. So when you read the book of Hebrews, understand that these people were wanting to go back into the Jewish faith. And so the Hebrew writer begins to explain a lot of things, and now he's beginning to explain what faith is, and he's beginning to talk about some of these heroes of faith in the Old Testament. Look at verse 3. By faith we understand that the world's during these successive ages were framed, fashioned, put in order, and equipped for their intended, intended purpose by the word of God, so that what we see was, was, made, not, was made out of things which are, are visible. So in other words, God makes things that you cannot see, and he brings them into where you can see them. So he takes something you can see, but he's, he's made that out of something you can't see. Now, that's powerful. Look at verse 4. Prompted, activated by faith, talking about Abel now, brought God, brought God a better and more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, because of, because of which it was testified of him that he was righteous, that he was upright and in right standing with God, and God bore witness by accepting and acknowledging his gifts. And though he died, yet through the incident, he is still speaking. Talking about Abel. So he's, even though he's dead, he still speaks. His blood cries out, really, for vengeance. Look at verse 5. Because of faith, Enoch was caught up and transferred to heaven, so that he did not have to have a glimpse of death. Here we see uh, the rapture in uh, in, uh, in this picture here of Edot being caught up to heaven so that he did not have a glimpse of death and he was not found because God had translated him from earth to heaven. For even before he was taken to heaven, he received testimonies still on record that he had pleased and been satisfactory to God. So now we see some things that, that are pretty exciting I mean, by faith, these people really did uh, uh, accomplish many things. Now, verse 6 is very important. But without faith, it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to him, that is, to God. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. So without faith, it is impossible to please God. So everything that we do, or let's put it this way, everything that we appropriate in the Bible, whether it's salvation or healing or, or whatever blessing that we appropriate by, we have to do it by faith. From beginning to end, it's by faith. Look at verse 7. Prompted by faith, notice this, prompted by faith, Noah being forewarned by God concerning events of which at yet there was no visible sign, took heed and diligently and reverently constructed and prepared an art for the deliverance of his own family. Can you imagine you're, 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 you're out there in the backyard and you're building this big boat and there's no ocean to float it in? <laughs> and 
And people are wondering, you must be crazy, you know. And, uh, but put yourself in Noah's place. I mean, but see, he had faith. And when you have faith, you have an inward knowing. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, things not seen. And so he knew that it was going to come true. So he was able to endure. By this, his faith, which relied on God, he passed judgment and sentence on the world, unbelief, unbelief and became an heir and possessor of righteousness, that relation of being right into which God puts the person who has faith. Now look at verse 8. Urged on by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and went forth to a place which he was destined to receive as an inheritance, and he went all though he did not know or trouble his mind about where he was to go. Can we grasp that? Where are you going? I don't know. <laughs> what are you doing in the car? I'm going somewhere, but where are you going? I don't know. Can you, men, can you see yourself in the car? You're driving down the road, and the wife says, Honey, where are we going? And you say, I don't know. But honey, then she would say, You would say, But how, if you don't know where you're going, how will you know if you get there? Or how would, you not, how would you know maybe you would pass it up? I mean, think about that. I hope you can comprehend a little bit of that. Because, because when faith operates in your life, you have, you're seeing things that others can't see. You know that you know that you know. All right, I want to move on. Let's see, I'm going to, well, I'm going to, I want to read a little bit more. All right, let's move on. Prompted by faith, he dwelled as a temporary resident in the land which was designated in the promise of God. Though he was like a stranger in a strange country, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs with him of the same promise. For he was waiting expectantly and confidently looking forward to the city which has fixed and firm foundation, whose architect and builder is God. So what we see here, we see that all of these men, they're, they're called men of, of faith. They're heroes of the Old Testament. And it just talks about all the things that happened as they moved in faith. Now I'm going to move on down a little bit here further now. And uh, what you will see that God brings up a lot of these people through the Hebrew writer to talk about how these men was prompted by faith, and they actually received, many of them received what they had believed, okay? Now, I want you to, let's move to verse 35. Verse 35, are we there? 1135. Here we go. Now, we skipped a lot of these uh, people because of time. But what I want you to see is that by faith, they accomplished a lot. Uh, many of them was raised from the dead. So we're going to see this here in verse 35. Some women received again their dead by resurrection. So they prayed, and their loved ones was resurrected. God resurrected them. So actually, you go back and you see that all these people that had faith, many of them got what they believed, what they had faith. Here we see some women received again their dead by resurrection. Now notice this. This thing gets on the negative side now. Catch it. Others were tortured to death with clubs, refusing to accept release offered on the terms of denying their faith so that they might be resurrected to a better life. Talking about the resurrection into eternity. Now, 
the picture you want to see here, that these people that were tortured, I know they prayed, they had faith, they believed, but they weren't delivered here. They were tortured. They died. Now we're moving into the negative part of this thing. All right, let's move on. Verse 36. Others had to suffer the trial of mocking and scourging and even chains and imprisonment. Look at verse 37. They were stoned to death. They were lured with tempting offers to renounce their faith. They were sawn asunder. This will wake you up. You know how they do that, how they did that? They would stretch the person between two trees or sometimes between some horses with ropes on their hands, and then they would take this saw. It, 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 it was like it just, it just saw you right up, right up in half. Shocking. Well, didn't they just, didn't these people have faith like those other people that were delivered? Why, why, why did they get saw, uh, sawed uh, in half? Why, why did they get beaten? Why did they have to suffer? Why did all this have to happen? Weren't they just as good as those others as we read in, in, uh, in chapter 11 that, that were delivered? So you see the contrast there. How many of you know they could have got bitter? Can you see that? They could have got real bitter, but they held to their faith, okay? All right, let's move on. Now, I'm trying to show you a, a contrast here because um, as, if you live long enough, and I would say that most people here tonight, you could tell and give testimony of how you prayed for somebody and you saw that individual uh, get healed or get set free. Uh, I can give many testimonies, and I'm going to do that in just a little bit. You read that all through the, through the Bible of, of many people being set free. I prayed for a lot of people that got delivered, that got demons cast out of them, they got healed, God set them free from bondages. But then I prayed for some folks, I hate to tell you this, they died. Does that stop me? Is that going to stop me from continuing to, to walk as a man of faith? Is that going to stop me from, for, for, for not praying for people? No. See, you've got to cross that line to understand that God is God. Now, I can imagine everybody here tonight and people that hear this message, you can give testimonies of how God delivered you, delivered your family, healed you, set you free in certain areas, how God answered many of your prayers, and yet you could, if you're honest, you will probably could get up and testify, you know, I prayed and it didn't come out. I prayed and it didn't work out like I thought it was going to work out. How many agree with that? Let me see. Raise your hand. All right. See, we want to get a balance in this thing because first we want to say God is God. Everybody say God is God. Yeah. I remember this man talking to me. He said, boy, when I get to heaven, God's got a lot of, he's going to have to answer me on a lot of questions. Why this? Why that? I got news for you. He don't know God is God. God don't have to give us any answers. But I want to I encourage all of us tonight that even though it does not work out exactly like we prayed, the Bible promises us that God causes, will cause good to come out of everything for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. I'm going to be honest with you. As I look back at my life of 54 years of walking with God, I can thank God tonight that he did not answer some of my prayers. Anybody bear witness of that? I can really honestly say that. I know God can do no harm. 
God knew if there's any being in the universe that knows what he's doing, it is God. And a lot of times things don't work out just like we want them to work out. And I guess that will be the biggest test of your faith. Is God still your God? Are you still going to serve him? Are you still going to love him? A lot of people want to quit when they don't get their way. But God has developed me to have such a relationship with him. He can do me no harm. I know that regardless of how it comes out. And everything hasn't come out exactly like I have prayed. But I'm going to let God be God. I thank God I can stand here before you tonight. My mother, she had cancer. I think we found it when she was probably about 60 years old. I believe tonight through our prayers and, and, and the prayers of the saints, you know when she finally did die? Or let me say, when she finally left this earth and went to heaven? when she was 84 years old. And I believe that God extended her life because of the prayers of the saints. You're talking about a miracle. I mean, we prayed for my dad, and he was a rascal. I, you know, you've heard me say that. But boy, when he did get saved, he was a saint. He was an alcoholic. He was a rascal. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I still loved him. And God still loved him. Everybody gave up on my dad. But my mom, myself, and Susan, and the Lord, <laughs> and, and, my, and my grandmother. And brother, he, and, he, and I had the privilege of leading him to Christ. And what a blessing it is when you, when you see that Somebody is changed by the power of God. I mean, out of darkness into light. Have you ever known anybody in your family that was a rascal? I don't know. You might be one of them. I don't know. <laughs> I got <gotcha>. you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. But what a blessing it is, you know. And so... When you read the book of, of, of in, in the book of um, chapter 11, I want you to see the contrast that how God answered and did many things because of these men of faith, and yet many of them, their prayers weren't answered, yet they held on to their faith, and they died in their faith. And that's what you want to remember. If you die... That is, when you pass from this life, you want to make sure you died in faith. You held on to your faith. You died believing that God is God. Because as Christians, we don't really die. We just walk, we just flew out of these bodies. And thank God for that. Well, let's read on a little bit more. Now, now we're, we're, we're dealing with the negative thing here. Let's look at verse 37. We've got uh, 36, I'm sorry. What we got? 37? Okay, let's go with 37. They were stoned to death. They were lured with tempting offers to renounce, which I, which I read all of that. Uh, let's move on down. Uh, they were slaughtered by the sword while they were alive. They had to go about wrapped in the skins of sheep and goats, utterly destitute, oppressed, and cruelly treated. Now, these are Old Testament saints that we're talking about, and they still held to their faith and died in their faith. And we say, what kind of God is that? Well, we have a God that will allow his son to suffer for us. In fact, the Bible says, endure hardships as good soldiers of the Lord. I like to be able to tell people that is going to be fuzzy all the time. How many of you know it ain't fuzzy all the time? Has anybody met any brars along the way? 
Uh, thank God we've smelled a few roses, but we've had a few briars. So you've got to balance this thing out in your life. Now, what I want you to see tonight, and what I want to encourage every one of us, we prayed for Martha. Frank got up here, he poured out his soul the other night, or the other morning, I forgot the time. I mean, I'm really, you know, I'm not, the, I'm not here yet. I'm, I want you to know, I'm, I'm coming back together. It's been quite a week for Susan and me, believe me. Just, just the phone calls that's coming in and all the things that we had to do down at the hospital. No, not complaining, but I just want you to know some. I seen Willie. Willie, the doctors were there. Willie stood right before his wife and said, Martha, live. <laughs> and the doctors, I mean, he was bold. Martha, do you hear me? We're coming forth here. I mean, he's, he prayed right over her boldly. Powerful. Is his faith in vain? No. See, that's what I want to get across. Sometimes you'll feel like a fool. Now, I want to be honest with you. Can I be honest tonight? This thing is real to me. I've, I've walked through circumstances and situations. Thank you. I've walked through circumstances and situations with, with people that sometimes I say, Lord, I don't know if I can walk through another situation with anybody or not. I'm just being honest. Because my heart is ripped out when I see a couple that can't get along, when I see somebody believing for their child and the child dies. Sometimes I go to the hospital and I feel like I'm powerless. And if I didn't know the Word of God, if I didn't, if I dwelled on that, I would swivel up and just die right there in the floor in the hospital. But I said, no, God is God. I do not have to understand everything. I'm God's servant. What he allows me to understand, thank you, Father. And what I cannot understand, that's okay. He's God. He's still God. I will not get bitter. I will still stand with people. I will still pray with people. And when they're believing, I will believe with them. See, when I see somebody believing and standing with somebody, I don't care what's going on inside of me. It ain't about me. What are you standing? What are you believing? I'm going to believe with you. Do, you. do you understand that? And everything in you might say, you may know it ain't going to work out, but you will not voice that. I want the teachers and the ministers to understand that. You don't voice that. You stand with them. Because when it's all over, and if they do pass away or, or it don't work out like you think it ought to work out, at least you can say, I did all that I knew to do. And your conscience is clear. A lot of times we have to do things strictly for conscience sake. Remember that. So over the years, Susan and me and, and, and Frank and Linda and, and Rick and Missy, that's all some of you, We've stood with people, believing the best, believing that God's going to deliver them, believing that it's going to work out. And sometimes those things don't work out. Are we going to stop preaching? Are we going to stop believing? No. Because there again, Romans 8, 28. Let's stop there for a moment. Turn to uh, Romans 8, 28 and put it on the board real quick like, in fact, we'll read it on the board, 828, Romans. And we are to read prior to that, but we don't have enough time. We are assured and know that God being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. That's a powerful verse of scripture. It may look negative, how can God take someone that you love, they die, how can God take that and work, work good out of it? Something to think about. But see, he's God, he can do it. Now let's stop and think for a moment. Let's say we're praying for somebody, and that person dies. You don't know the future. Maybe if that person was healed and that person lived down the road, 
three or four or five years ago uh, down the road as they, they live on. They may come into a situation that God don't want them really to experience. So God knows. So he might just say, okay, come home with me. Come home with me. Now, I know we don't understand that because we're on this side. But once you see the other side, by faith, I will be honest with you, this side ain't much down here. I'll be honest. Oh, I know our flesh don't understand that. Well, I still got some banana pudding to eat. Yeah, but they got better banana pudding on the other side. Sorry. I hope I'm making a little sense. I'm trying to, I'm trying to balance out something here. Now, I'm a man of faith. I know when you get on TV and you see those people of faith are preaching, you know, you know, and that's good. But what are they doing? They're trying to get people's faith up because a lot of things can happen because the devil's working on them all the time. So we're trying to build people up in the faith. But there's sometimes we just need a little sober teaching like this to understand that sometimes it don't work out like you hope. And how's that going to affect your walk with God? How's that going to affect your walk with the brothers and sisters? How's that going to affect your attitude towards the Word of God? I've had people say to me, I don't want to hear it. I believe this, I believe that, it didn't work out. I don't want to hear it no more. Did anybody here can understand that just a little bit? Because they're allowing resentment and bitterness towards God to get into their heart, and that's the work of the devil. But this one thing you have to settle in your life, God is a good God, and he will cause, he will cause it all to work out for good to those and for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose, which we are. My sister, she was uh, in her 60s. She got cancer in the brain. Prayed, fasted, did everything I know to do. But she passed from this life. And I begin to, as I begin to read in the Bible a little bit, I said, I need a little balance in this thing in my life. And so then I begin to read and begin to understand that even though it may not work out here, in the long run, it's going to work out good. Because God's going to see that it's going to work out good for us. Even though we might not see it on this side of the river. But once we get to heaven... We will, he, will, he will probably say, now see there, Bob, why this thing did, what I did, what happened there. What I did. Oh, Lord, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. So I hope I'm getting through to you. That hold fast to your faith. Do everything you know to do. To pray against the enemy. To pray for people. To stand for Now, there's a time, let me say this. There is a time when you've got to stop praying. My good brother that I know many years ago, his wife got, not his wife, but his mother got cancer. And he held her here on this earth by his prayers. I want you to hear that. He kept her in that condition. She was, had cancer, but he would not let her die. He held on to his faith until finally the preacher said, let your mother go. Turn her loose. He turned her loose. She went right to heaven. That's how powerful prayer is. So we need, we don't know what next week is. We don't know what next month is. Maybe the person you're praying for, a year from now, they, if, if, if they got healed, let's say that they lived and another year passed, they get in an automobile accident, and they end up in the hospital, and they're a vegetable, and they're living in the bed for about 10 years 
tubes in their nose and their ears and down their throat for 10 years. Anybody understand what I'm saying? There's people in the hospital like that now. I told Susan, don't let that happen to me. I told Frank, Rick, trip over the plug. Send me on. I don't want to be a vegetable laying in bed. Can anybody understand that? So there's balance in all things. And maybe on this side we might not understand, but I really believe once we get on the other side, once we get into heaven, if the Lord chooses to say, Bob, let me share something with you. Let me, let me show you why I didn't answer your prayer in that situation. And then he would show it to me. And I say, God, thank you, God, you're God. <laughs> thank you, Lord, you are God. Because I, I got a little something to tell you. You may be 60, 60 years old, and you don't want to die. So you get 70, you don't want to die. You get 80, you don't want to die. Well, when do you want to die? <laughs> when would be the exact time in your mind that you're ready to go? Well, I want to pay serious before I go. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, 50 or 60 or 70 or 80, when we get to heaven, we'll look at one another about another million years down the road. we say, who went first? And we'd say, who cares? <laughs> Some would, uh, probably the most of us would say, why didn't the Lord take me quicker? <laughs> you know, this, uh, this guy that passed away went to heaven. And boy, he was looking at heaven and he was saying, man, this is great, man. I'm wonderful. I don't know why I didn't get here earlier. And the Lord said, you would have if you had not eaten those Wheaties. <laughs> Some of that stuff will keep you alive, you know. All right, so the picture that, that, that we want to see, we want to pray, we want to believe, we want to seek God for people that, that, are, that are in these situations. And, and we see many, many people uh, healed. Now, like Willie, Willie had an open, open heart surgery, okay? And uh, we've all prayed, and, and God brought him forth, and he's doing great. My dad had open heart sur surgery, and he died, you see? But I didn't let that stop me from praying for Willie that the operation would be successful. Suppose I would have gotten bitter. My dad died. He had an open heart surgery. He died. So I ain't praying for nobody no more. I prayed, I fasted, I did everything I know to do for my, my dad to live, and he died. Well, he died at 82 years old. That ain't too bad. So I ain't going to pray for nobody no more. Well, I've prayed for a lot of people since my, my pappy passed away back in uh, 1987, I think it was. Rosemary had an open heart surgery. We all prayed. She lived. Kurt had open heart surgery. We all prayed. He lived. So we see God answering a lot of our prayers, and we can name people that we prayed for. Charlie, my, my brother-in-law, uh, doing, uh, how many remember Hugo? Yeah, we all remember Hugo around here. But anyway, he was operating this machine, and this thing came back and hit him in the head. And they took him to the hospital. And I, and I really like when God speaks to my spirit. And if he don't speak, I relax in the thing. And so I got to the hospital, and, and, and his, all the children were just crying and weeping. And God spoke to me, he ain't going to die, he's going to live. Now, when you speak that, when the situation is really bad, I mean, it looks like he's dead right now, and you come up with something like this, and, you, and everybody's in the room, and they're all crying and weeping, and you say, can I have everybody's attention? Oh, Uncle Bobby wants to say something. He won't die, he will live. 
everything quieted down, peace came into the place. Well, he lived. Say he lived. So, so if God speaks, you say what God tells you. If he don't, you go on. Now, there's things that you can know ahead of time because, because God will tell us, and then you learn to be bold. And, and, but you make sure. Now, just think if I was wrong. Let's say I was wrong and he died. Everybody would classify me as a false prophet. If someone prophesies something and it doesn't come out like he says, that he, it will show that he's a false prophet. But a real, not that I'm a prophet, but the, the principle is the same, a man of God or whatever. When God speaks, you can be sure it'll come out exactly. When I was on the golf cart, driving down the road, God spoke to me, go across the lawn there, look for the snake. I did. There he is, right in front of the golf cart. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Took care of that snake. But God don't speak all the time. And he don't have to speak. But when he does speak, then you can speak what he speaks to you. Now remember that. And so it does help people a lot of times. Uh, Susan's got a brother now. The doctor said in six months from now, he'll be dead, okay? So that, we got that face on us. As uh, Susan's brother, he's about 60, 63 years old. Uh, Roger used to be, this years ago, he was a manager of a uh, of, uh, of red and white store store somewhere up the country there and this um, guy comes in he's gonna rob the store okay well Roger's sort of an old country boy and that guy said we're gonna rob this store he's got a gun on him <laughs> and Roger said no you're not gonna rob this store would you say that with a gun in your face you ever seen anybody like that have you I, have you seen no you're not gonna rob this store Mister, you don't understand. I got the gun. I'm going to rob this store. And Roger said, no, you're not going to rob this store. <laughs> and so this other guy comes in, which is part of that situation. And Roger's oldest daughter's coming down the other end around the store. And she sees what's happening. And she starts hollering, screaming, blowing the trumpet in Zion. <laughs> that other guy grabs her and puts her in the freezer locks the door, and about that time, the guy hits Roger in the head, knocks him out on the floor, blood all over the place, robs the store, and goes off. So the, the daughter's in the freezer, nobody's in the store, and Roger's on the floor bleeding to death, okay? So somebody comes in, and they call 911, and they get him down, they take him to the hospital. So, of course, we get the call, Roger's going to die, you know, he's bleeding to death, that, 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 that told the story, so we go down there. And sometimes you want, God, I don't, don't speak to me, you know. I don't know if you understand that or not, because there's still that little, you know, is that you, Lord? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, he ain't going to die, he's going to live. So when God tells you something, it's your responsibility. Of course, his kids, I mean, they were, ah, you know, I mean, it was just horrible, you know. Time out. Uncle Bobby wants to say something. He ain't going to die. He's going to live. Whiten everything down. He lived, okay? But now he's facing death again. Do I have a word? No. If I get a word that he's going to die, am I going to tell him? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, but these are experiences that men and women of God have in their lives, and you learn God uh, in ways that other people uh, really really don't don't know and so as we move on in life i guarantee you you could go back in your life and you could see people that you prayed for you did everything you knew and they died and yet there's people in all of our lives that we prayed for and they live okay and we have the question why did they live and these others died well, I'm going to tell you the answer I have. I don't really know, okay? But I know this. 
If they love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, God will work it out for good for those that love the Lord. What are we going to see in Martha's situation? She passed away, I think she's 63 years old, but she's in heaven. And, and I, I want to inject this in this message. You know, sometimes, gosh, it's time to go to church again. Now, if you've been going to church a long time, I know what you feel at times. Okay, so you can't bluff this old timer because I've been right there where you're at. I don't want to go to church tonight. But you know, I want you to, right here tonight, this is a special moment. I'm going to say that again. Right here tonight, even though some of you are tired, you're here, and you say, man, get this message over quick. I want to go home, eat that banana pudding. But this is a special moment. Now, I want you to think for a moment. Three weeks ago, Martha was sitting right there. Right there. She's sitting right there. And I was teaching the Word of God about Moriah. The mountain, remember Mount Moriah, Mount Zion? I was teaching that message. And she's on that DVD. Now you can see her. And sometimes you'll see Martha lean over there against Willie. Her head will just reach over there, you know. You know. But see, that will never happen again. We will never see Martha walk in here or sit in that chair again. But we're here. And even though there's part of us wants to get home, this is really a very special moment of time. Because next week, or week after next, I'm not going to prophesy. But you may be up there with Martha, and you won't be sitting in that chair. You're sitting right there. Did you realize thousands of people die every year? I want to say something different. They die every day. People going out, people coming in. 24-7. People coming in, little baby, precious people going out. Thousands every day. But see, we go through life. This is the way it'll always be. It won't always be this way. Because there'll be a day when I leave, you leave, and the congregation changes its faces. So this is really a blessed time when you look at one another. In fact, do that right now and say, I'm good to see you here tonight. Go ahead, just turn to that person. Just turn to that person. This is good to hear. Because you might not see them next week. Because, see, that's reality. That's reality. Now, hopefully, we hope that you all will be here. But I'm saying that, but the next time you don't want to come to church, you say, I think I'll go. It might be the last night I'll be, be able to go. <laughs> and knock off the devils, you know. And, and it does. It, it's, it's, you, know, you know who the real heroes are? You guys are. That person that perseveres, that faithful saint that keeps these lights burning. This is, the, this is the light on the hill right here tonight. There are those that uh, don't want to come to church. I'm not going to get upset about it. I'm going to live for Jesus. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep preaching. I'm going to keep teaching. I'm going to keep loving. I'm going to keep forgiving. I'm going to keep blessing. Because it, one day, we're gone. We out of here. Isn't it wonderful? How would you like to live in your body and it's 150 years old and it's giving you trouble already? Hmm? How many wants to live to 100? Okay. How many wants to live to be 90? 80. I got about nine months to go. 
as long as I'm health, healthy and I can pick them up and I can eat banana pudding, you know, I want to stay around really to do the, the will of the Father. And I'll be honest, I don't want to really leave Susan. That's selfish, isn't it? Selfish. But when my time comes, don't pray me back. Send me on to glory. It's better up there than down here. See, people out in the world need to hear this message. Now, five minutes and you're, we're all going. <laughs> out that way. <laughs> Turn to uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and we'll go quit on this one. 2 Corinthians 4. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting with verse 16. 4, 16, are we there? All right, we're going to read this real quick. It's up on the board. There it is. There we go. Therefore, we do not become discouraged or utterly spiritless, exhausted and, we and wearied out through fear, though our out outer man is progressively decaying and wasting away, yet our inner self is being progressively renewed day after day. Verse 17. For our light momentary, remember it's momentary, affliction, this slight distress of the passing hour, which is basically he's talking about our life down here, is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory beyond all measure, excessively surpassing all comparison and all calculations, a vast and transcendent, transcendent glory and blessedness never to cease. Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen, for the things that are visible are temporal, brief, fleeing, but the things that are invisible are definitely and everlasting. Now that's a powerful verse of Scripture. All these things that we have to bear down here, Paul says, these light afflictions. Have you read Paul's afflictions in the Bible? Hmm? Have you read, raise your hand if you've read about Paul. Yeah. If you haven't, you need to get into the Word of God and read. He calls those light afflictions. We, we don't even come close to some of those things. Yeah, but this person was talking about me. Oh, my goodness. Can I be kind to you? Grow up. <laughs> now, we don't like people to talk to us. No big deal. But when they put and beat you 40 49 times with a whip. That's, and he calls that a light affliction. We haven't even had any affliction yet. Isn't God been good to us? God's been good to us. So Martha's gone from here, but she's with her Lord. Never to get hungry again, never to suffer, never to feel pain never to be talked about, never to be mistreated. She's up there with a lot of her friends, and above all, she's up there with Jesus. And we will see her again. And the feeling I have, it won't be long. Because I really believe. You know, the Bible talks about the last days, but the Bible talks about the last of the last days. And that's where we're at today. It would be wonderful if Jesus would, would come right now. But, but I'd like to see my mama one more time. Well, you'll see her going up, we hope. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, I hope that maybe some way tonight that we...